What was life really like for a male concubine under the most powerful men of the ancient world? In ancient Rome, being a male concubine was both a privilege and a peril. While it offered access to wealth and luxury, it also exposed men to dangerous whims and shifting political tides. Male concubines occupied a unique space within Roman society, closer to power than most, yet largely vulnerable, living at the mercy of powerful figures who saw them as possessions, status symbols, or even pawns in their political games. In Rome, concubinage was a legal and socially recognized relationship, though one that lacked the full status of marriage. Concubines were typically those who could not or were not permitted to be official spouses due to differences in social status, citizenship, or other legal barriers. While concubines were often women, some powerful men, including emperors, maintained male concubines, especially from among their slaves or servants. These men came from a variety of backgrounds. Some were slaves purchased specifically for this purpose. Others were young men of low status who caught the eye of someone in power. Although life as a concubine could offer security and access to wealth, it also came with severe limitations. Male concubines were often seen as property rather than partners and were, in many ways, at the mercy of their patrons, the T.O.B. a concubine of an emperor or elite Roman was, in many ways, a mixed blessing. On the one hand, they enjoyed privileges beyond what most Romans could imagine, lavish living quarters, fine clothes, and an enviable position near the seat of power. Yet their lives were dictated by the whims and desires of their patrons. For instance, Emperor Hadrian's young lover, Antonus, was not merely a concubine, but a beloved companion, given immense influence and affection. When Antonus tragically drowned in the Nile, Hadrian's grief was so great that he ordered temples, statues, and even an entire city to be named in the young man's honor. This was an extraordinary level of devotion rarely shown to lovers, especially male concubines. While the favor of an emperor could elevate a concubine status, it also made them vulnerable to sudden changes. Emperors like Nero and Tiberius were notorious for their unpredictable behavior toward their lovers. Nero, for example, held unusual marriage ceremonies with some of his male concubines, dressing them in bridal attire and casting them in female roles, a bold move that challenged traditional Roman expectations. Nero's male concubine Sporus was even castrated to fulfill the emperor's ideal of a submissive spouse, showing the extent of control the emperor wielded over him. For Sporus, life was a cycle of forced compliance and constant exposure to Nero's dark and violent whims. Tiberius, another notorious ruler, used his position to exploit young male concubines, particularly in his private villas on the island of Capri. Accounts describe horrific actions that portray Tiberius as a man who viewed his concubines not as partners, but as tools for his pleasure, devoid of personal agency. Stories of his behavior, though potentially exaggerated, reflect a dangerous reality for concubines, a life dictated entirely by the sometimes depraved desires of their patrons. Male concubines, especially those from lower classes or servile backgrounds, faced a particular social stigma. Unlike the celebrated status of mistresses or even female concubines, male concubinage often carried a perception of shame or emasculation. Roman society viewed sexual relationships through a lens of dominance, seeing the dominant partner as powerful and the submissive partner as weak or subjugated. Concubines, who by their role were expected to submit, could experience scorn or belittlement from the public, particularly if they were seen as compromising their masculinity. Concubines were also frequently caught in political power plays. If an emperor or senator fell out of favor, his concubines could suffer consequences, either being cast out or, in extreme cases, executed to avoid any lingering associations. Because they were symbols of status, concubines could find themselves at risk during times of political upheaval or transition. The life of a male concubine then was one of contrasts. There were tangible rewards, proximity to the most powerful figures, access to a privileged lifestyle, and even the possibility of influence. Concubines were sometimes lavished with gifts and could be highly educated, developing a knowledge of literature, the arts, and politics. 
However, the underlying power imbalance and the ever-present risk of falling out of favor made such a life a precarious one. Those who successfully navigated their roles might rise in status or earn freedom, possibly even securing a place in the patron's will. But for most, the role of male concubine was fleeting and in the end, defined by subjugation to the emperor's desires and the shifting tides of Roman politics. In the Roman Empire, male concubines lived fascinating lives, both privileged and perilous, as symbols of prestige, yet subject to whims they couldn't control. Their stories tell us much about the complexity of Roman society, where personal relationships and public power often collided, creating a world where the rewards of intimacy with the elite came at a steep and unpredictable cost. Would such a life of luxury and influence be worth it if it also meant enduring the uncertainty and risks that came with it? For the male concubines of ancient Rome, this was a question they lived each day.